My guest at this time puts the Ian Abel in the Ian Abel band. They've got a new single out called Not Afraid to Die. It's Ian Abel. Ian, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me here today. Thank you for having me, Nick. My pleasure, Ian. And as I was telling you just before we started recording, I threw on Not Afraid to Die, the song you uh, worked with Cody with for uh, AEW. And um, I'm from Texas. I love my dirty Southern rock. I love drive-by truckers. Uh, this song really resonated with me. Um, do you like it when you hear things like that? Do you like being compared to other people like that? Oh, being compared to the drive-by truckers is an honor. I saw them at Bonnaroo in 2008, and it was like noon, I think they played. And the front row on both sides was just topless girls. And I was like, okay, this is great. This is heaven. Uh, <laughs> so I love it. And I'm also a big fan of their music. I think Decoration Day is an incredible album. Jason Isbell is one of my huge inspirations. He's a god when it comes to songwriting. And uh, yeah, I will take that to the bank. Wonderful. I actually have Decoration Day on vinyl in the other room. So I think after this, I might just uh, go crack a beer and, and sit down and take that in. You know, oh, that'd be awesome. I might too. Just <laughs> not on vinyls, MP3. But yeah, <laughs> you know, whatever. You're, you're cooler than I am. You got vinyl. Nah, whatever. It's my girlfriend. She's the opera singer. She's the one who brought that into the house. So That's awesome. Um, <laughs> So how, so what was it? Was it the naked women that wanted to make you be a musician? What brought you into music, Ian? Uh, I wish it was something as cool as that. I watched the movie School of Rock when I was a freshman in high school. Okay. Yeah. And like uh, that, I guess that was it. I was like, whoa, I didn't, I mean, God, I'm going to sound so stupid here. It's not like I didn't know what a guitar was, but like, I just I'd never really experienced a guitar. I My father was a bass guitarist and he had one in the closet i had no idea like he'd quit playing forever and so he like pulls one i was like oh like this and i was like uh the, the smaller one the one that the one dude was with the hat and then the one jack black was dewey finn was doing and uh so yeah that ever since that movie like grades downhill everything's just all rock and roll after that <laughs> a true musician you put your education second you know <laughs> So, so my music education i was always good at that so you ran away and you joined the music circus um how did you uh so before you we talk about how you joined the the pro wrestling circus in a way what, what's your pro wrestling fandom were you always a wrestling fan where, where where did that begin for you yeah i grew up in louisville so we have ovw here and okay. i was um i mean i think i remember seeing undertaker on tv once and it shook me as a little kid I was like, what is this? Who they said he's you know, like he's putting people in coffins. And, you know, like he's he's dead. And there was the whole like the body bag thing for a while. And so, you know, you're a young kid, you have no clue where the line is. It's all blurred lines at that point. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, this is insane. So I'm tuning in every week, you know, to watch The Undertaker kill somebody. And ah, that sounded morbid. And then uh I don't know. So yeah, you know, Attitude Era and then you know the Monday Night Wars with WCW as well. Like I have prime time in my youth for that one. So I'm just glued to the TV with the button, the, the return button on the remote, and we just, you know, you're just ready to switch. Oh, it's okay, it's commercial. Boom, hit the other one. What's WCW doing? <laughs> so wait, you you said you grew up in Louisville around OVW. So how were you going to OVW shows growing up? Were you were you taking that in or no? I I'd been to OVW shows when uh when I got into like high school and I was able to, my father started a business and um, I was always in sports. So we never like, we didn't do any like OVW shows when I was a kid. Okay. To know if my parents knew <laughs> OVW was, was a thing to go to. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure they probably did, but we, me and a couple of buddies, we'd go see shows, you know, in high school and we were driving and things like that. Yeah, what were those shows like for you? Were there any big names you saw on those cards that went on to, to obviously become very famous? Oh, man, it's it's literally ever since I turned 16, it's all been a blur before that. I don't remember, I remember going to the shows. I remember being awesome, and it was different because I'd never been to a, a you know smaller show like that. Um, I don't remember any big names at the, the shows that I went to. Um, they probably hadn't, you know, became someone and I just, you know, they were wrestling under something else and I had no idea. I've, you know, a couple of my buddies were here when, um, cause I believe like Brock Lesnar came through and I believe even the, when the big show was healing, he, or I guess Paul White now he was in OVW while he was, uh, while he was healing up, I think it was his, was his knee, I believe I've, you know, OVW and Louisville, 
it's it's crazy because some people talk about it if everyone talks about it in that circle you know if you're a wrestling fan and you're in louisville you have friends that talk about it and go to the shows and things like that you gotta you know you kind of have to find them sort of and once you or you go to a show and you're like oh my god that's the dude in my math class like <laughs> what's he doing here and he's like oh you know my my cousin's a wrestler and you're like no way that's amazing can we get his autograph <laughs> like that's awesome. I love when you find, I love when you're younger and you get to finally like meet p- other people that are interested in wrestling. Cause it is kind of a taboo thing. It's not easy to, to out your wrestling friends, you know, in high school and things like that. It's it's I'd say it's always like the taboo to out your wrestling friends. In high school. <laughs> I always say it's like the, 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 the real silent majority or like the wrestling fans in the world, because you go, I've been to four WrestleManias and like Orlando and New Orleans were my favorite too that I went to because while our hotel is walking distance to all the fun stuff to go to, but you see everyone from all around the world and you're just like hearing different accents. It's like different accents from around the world and like macho man impressions. That's it. That's the only things you hear at WrestleMania. It's funny. I was at Orlando and New Orleans both. So there's a good chance we probably made bad decisions in bars alongside each other and didn't even know it. You know, I guarantee you, we probably cheers. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Well, that's awesome, man. And so like, you know, obviously you're, you're a fan and you, you were going to these shows and you've been to these WrestleManias. So like, how did you meet? How did you, did you meet Cody? And that's what got you in with AEW? Like how, how did this all kind of come about? So I was following, um, I guess, uh, being the elite, I was following their YouTube channel and everything. And I believe they had started a road to uh, double or nothing. Oh, I should have used, I should have had my cup here. I got a WrestleMania cup downstairs. I should have had it. Dang. This is a live it, events one. This is, is this a mania one? No, this is just a live events one. Big miss. I have my mania one downstairs. Big miss on my part. Okay. I, uh, I'd sent, um, I got a hold of Brandy actually hmm. and sent her our song Walk Out because there were a lot of there's a lot of signings and things like that um and i was like man this could be kind of a good jab song to like you know the bigger company that <laughs> they're going up against kind of like uh you know uh, every, the, the song is they the hook is they all walk out on you and so you're getting all these people coming over and i was like oh this could be cool and she emails me back within 15 minutes i was like hey ian that song was great um my husband, I showed it to my husband. I'm sitting there going, Oh my God, I know who that is. Like, 100%. <laughs> and she said, I, I showed it to my husband. He's actually looking for a song for um, his match he has coming up. I don't know anything about it. That's all I know. And I'm like, Whoa. So, and then suddenly I'm on an email chain with like seven other people, none of which, like, I didn't, you know, people I've never met still that didn't even pipe up in the email. They're just, monitoring it or assistance or something i was like oh this is for real so no i had not met them up until that point okay and so uh so they they, because that song uh, did they wind up using that song or was it shoes i guess that they wound up using for that this was the first one not afraid to die is actually the song because that was like thursday god it might have been a thursday or friday and then saturday i went into um my the studio with my buddy john graber and reed and we uh i'd written not afraid to die friday night just thinking about you know like who the Rhodes family is who cody is things like that because i knew i was like okay he they sent me a sample like this is what we're kind of looking for and i was like oh i got this let's let's do it and i think it was from like red dead redemption or something i was like oh i I can I'll, i'll smoke this check this out and i sent it to him saturday and where well, we recorded it Saturday and I sent it Sunday. So we just did it in one day. Are you talking like this past Saturday and Sunday? N- no, no, no. Oh, we, oh. Um, I was about to say, like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, time and we did it on that, or I recorded Not Afraid to Die on a Saturday and sent it to him. And actually, the majority of the time we were talking about shoes, actually, the time we were for the Double or Nothing match. We were emailing back and forth about shoes. And I actually thought we were talking about not afraid to die for a solid three weeks. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, I was I was way out of out of the loop until Cody sent me an email and it all it said was I want shoes. And that's how I was like, Oh, okay, that clears things up. Like all caps, like three exclamation points. I was like, Cody gets what he wants. All right, he got shoes then. I'll just back burner, not afraid to die. 
so what is so what is it like for you man like you know let's start with shoes here right i mean that was a huge match right uh double or nothing and what's it like for you to see your music get infused with pro wrestling what was that what was that experience like for you it was it was awesome it's something that i never like i had imagined when you're so you, when you start doing anything so for me playing guitar like i wanted to get really good at guitar and then i was like oh, okay, I'm writing songs. Who's going to sing them? I guess I'll sing these songs. And, you know, it's like, that's the project, the, the trajectory. And then it was, uh, okay, I've got all these songs. Let's record them. And so I never thought, or I would have never dreamed like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I like pro wrestling. Why don't I have my songs in pro wrestling? It just, it had never come to my mind, except one day I just sent an email. Just I was like, you know what? I've, I found their email. I was like, I'm going to just, I'm going to be ballsy here. Be brash. Let's do it. Let's, let's send it out. And so when it happened, I was like, wow, I should have thought of like, this is awesome. I would, I mean, it blows me away still to think, and especially because it blows me away to think about the matches that they were involved with more than anything. Sure. You know, cause like it, they were two incredible matches, the brother versus brother match insane. Darby Allen winning the TNT championship, finally overcoming the odds, you know, beating Cody, who's the baby face of the company, who may be the baby face of the wrestling world. You know, it's like, wow. Yeah. My songs are a part of that. Insane. It's insane to think about. Well, a lot of people say that Cody Dustin match was like the best AEW match of all time. I mean, maybe the best of that whole year. And I think it's pretty I was I was live at that show. And, wow. Cool. Uh yeah. Yeah, dude. I remember your song playing. I remember seeing the cowboy boots and I, you know, there was all kinds, there was all the shoe symbol, the shoe symbology, right? Like there was so much going on in there. And I mean, that, that's gotta be a huge honor to know that you were just like a part of that whole experience of making that match uh, emotionally feel like it was because I mean, you know, talk a little bit uh, to me about like what you think music brings to pro wrestling, like how music can heighten or take away from pro wrestling when used uh, correctly or incorrectly, you know? I'll, I'll talk about correctly because okay. I don't know incorrectly. I'd have to think about it correctly. It comes right to a story about how I had been to a couple like WWE things when I was younger, but now I'm older. I'm in college. My raw's coming through. My little brother is really, he's seven years younger than me. He's really into wrestling. So uh, we take him to go see Monday night raw, you know, they're filming. It's going to be incredible. And it said undertakers in action. And now he's my favorite wrestler. I'd never seen him before. And bringing it all the way back to music being a part of wrestling, like this is just his theme song. The whole time is like we're having a good time, but it's at the very end. The lights go out. You hear like the dong. And next, I'm yelling. Dude, I lost my voice in a matter of 30 seconds. Like I jumped up, spilt my drink. I think I elbowed my dad. Like I'm going nuts because the Undertaker's like, I'd never seen him. And like it, it, the, the kid came out of me. And Needless to say, the lights came up and he actually wasn't there. He was just in action. There was someone in the ring that had moved. And I was like, after the third time, I finally realized he wasn't showing up. Aww. I know. But music, move, uh, music in, in pro wrestling, you know, when you, you hear like an Undertaker's, the lights go out, you hear the gong go off. Or I was in Texas for a WrestleMania when they were doing the three on three. It was just a quick beat down. But you're in Dallas, the glass smashes, out comes Stone Cold. I'm getting chills thinking about it right now. Like certain things are just iconic and then and they, you know, they blend together like that. Or um, was it Rock Stone Cold, uh, My Way? Uh, yes, that was the My Way one. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so you hear that song and then you immediately go to that. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Because it's, wrestling, pro wrestling is just nothing but, you know, when done beautifully or done correct, it's just beautiful storytelling. It's no different than, um, you know, you take a score out of Star Wars and you're like, what am I watching? <laughs> yeah, it becomes a little flat without the music. Absolutely. Um, and so with you, you know, you yeah. talk about these these theme songs that you you really love and, and remember. I mean, obviously, you you know, you, you've gone more the my way route where you're underscoring kind of these matches and things. Uh, have you talked to anybody about maybe pinning a, a theme song or two for AEW? It seems like a kind of an open range over there for when it comes to theme song and stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've, I've talked a little bit to them. It'd have to be, I guess the right person. 
most most likely it was not this is not most likely to happen but the wrestler that i think i would fit best with would probably be hangman adam page agreed you know but he's already got cool music you know that's already done i think i would love to write and i've said it a bunch of times i'll say it again i would love to write anna J a a really dope theme song cool yeah i know it's out there but i think anna J is going to be a superstar she's on her way up i think she's going to be great yeah. i'd love to write her a song but i'm also really happy with the trajectory i'm on of just like adding bangers to incredible matches you know like yeah yeah so i i you know you 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 don't want to taint it too much by like, God, I wouldn't be tainting it being a wrestler's theme song. That's, uh, that's crazy to say, but I do really enjoy to be like, yeah, I had two songs and they were both for pretty historic moments in this early um, beginnings of the company. Man. And so like uh, uh, you said, I remember you said earlier, you hadn't quite met Cody. I would guess at this point you, you have met Cody. Yes. Right. And hung out with him and things. I was in Nashville for the CMAs in 2019. God, it was like November 2019. And in Nashville, they do a whole week of events or whatever. And so you're there for songwriting stuff, meeting people, you know, drinking, you know, going to party. And uh, AEW actually did a show in Nashville that week. And so my dad drove down and Cody uh, just reached out and they're like, yeah, for sure. And they got us backstage tickets and or passes. And we went back there like an hour or two before the show and just hung out. I talked to him and he was really busy, but he, we talked for like 20 minutes, which is crazy because he's an EVP, you know, and people are running up to him, asking him things. And I got to meet Dustin, which was wild because we shook hands. And the only thing I could say was like, am I allowed to cuss? You can say whatever you want. Okay. The only thing I could think to say when Dustin shook my hands was this is fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Cause I mean, it's like you, a lot of us, like we've been watching Dustin for 30 years at this point, you know, from like gold dust to where he is now. Yeah. He took an impossible character in gold dust and made it a thing. Well, I guess we're kind of like discrediting all the, t the time he spent as the natural Dustin Rhodes before gold dust, you know, Very true. Very, yeah. But that's just a little before my time. Like I'm 36, and even that's just a little before my time. You know, it was it was awesome. I mean, the craziest thing is my dad was running all backstage. I lost him from the get because he heard Jr. talk. My dad was like, well, "I'm gonna go meet Jr." and he just took off. And I was like, "I don't know what the, what the like if you're allowed to do that or what." And but I met Brandy, which was cool. Um, SCU walked by, and I was living in Los Angeles, so I fist bumped SCU talked to i didn't talk to mjf he he winked at me though i was like okay he's either gonna like knock the drink out of my hand <laughs> you know it's always kayfabe or but he winked i was like that's that's cool and meeting chris jericho who i think is the goat that was sick so jericho's obviously got his band in fozzy i mean have you ever had any talks with chris about collaborating or has he heard your music have you ever had a chance to talk to him about what you guys do or no we spoke briefly nothing about collaborating or anything like that we just spoke briefly, briefly backstage about music. And um, I don't know, anytime I'm around him, I try not to really talk business or shop. I feel like that's probably the wrong thing to do, but I'm just, you know, I'm just back there hanging out there before show they're getting ready. He yeah. was a champion at the time. So he was running around, but um, we, yeah, we, we, we talked music a little bit. I did have a wild idea that I was going to pitch to him before COVID where so the WWE, I think they're going to do WrestleMania in Los Angeles. And I was going to try, I have uh, connections, you know, I know the bookers at like the Troubadour, the whiskey. And I was going to, I was going to try to get a hold of Jericho and be like, we should throw a show there weekend of mania. Like that Saturday, just how, cause I was like, I'll open up. We can have three openers. I'll be the first one. I'll come on at eight for Fozzie that doesn't matter to me yeah but with that obviously COVID happened and that, that never that never came to be yeah that sucks man so like uh so what about going forward here like you know uh do you see yourself collaborating more with AEW do you I mean how much more do you want to do in the pro wrestling space is this something you want to be doing for a while now continuing to find opportunities and do things like this totally I mean yeah anybody that wants to use uh the music for anything cool like that for sure definitely I would I'm obviously huge, like all in with AEW, obviously, 
So I would love to keep working with them. But again, I want to make sure that, you know, I, we're still growing our fan base. So obviously anytime they want to use a song, definitely. But I do really love again, that the songs have been, you can attach shoes to double or nothing, you know, the inaugural pay-per-view that incredible brother versus brother match. You can attach not afraid to die to Darby Allen, Cody Rhodes, TNT championship. Yeah. You know? So I, I, I think in the long, long term, I would like to keep it on that sort of level as far as like, you know, when something cool's coming up, like for, for instance, when I thought the Shaq Cody thing was going to boil over to a pay-per-view event. Yeah. I think it a was, lot of people did. <laughs> I, 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 maybe it's because Brandy got pregnant. I'm not really sure. And I didn't ask, and I, I, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I thought it was going to go that route. And it was still an incredible match. You know, Shaq went through a freaking table. Like, how cool is that? But I had a song called Goliath that I was like, okay, if this is going the trajectory, I think it is. Like one of the lyrics is uh, even mountains wouldn't move for Goliath. I was like, this is, if it goes this route, this is it. But it didn't. So I was like, okay, I backed off, pulled off the reins a little bit. I was like, okay. Yeah, man. Well, uh, Ian, I, I've had a great time chatting with you. And I'd love to catch up with you again, man, the next time you, you drop some more, more tunes uh, in AEW. If for no other reason, then it gives me a chance to listen to more cool music and talk to somebody that I think uh, is making cool music. Um, where, can pe- where can people go to find you, follow you, support you, all those great things online, Ian? All social medias are at Ian Abel Band, I-A-N-A-B-E-L Band. We're even on TikTok. No dances, nothing lame like that. Promise. Unless people want it, then the, you know, give the people what they want. And we are on all streaming platforms. Our distributor just emailed me today and we're added to two new beta streaming platforms. I don't even know what they are, but we're there. If you follow them, we're on all of it. And um, we're also going to be dropping merch pretty soon here. We got a couple things in the works. We're with... Uh, the sister store to pro wrestling tees. It's called below the collar.